When Xavi was first announced as Barcelona's new manager, the club was not in great shape. The biggest player in the club's history left on a free, and the club had over 1 billion euro worth of debt, struggling to meet the astronomical wages of some of their players. However, lever after lever, selling a big chunk of their TV rights and a massive sponsorship with Spotify, the club have somehow managed to steady the ship. And with Xavi getting all the players he could have dreamed for, the ex-Barcelona midfielder can now focus on getting the club back to its best. And his tactics are certainly up to the task. Welcome back to Football Meta. If you enjoyed this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Xavi's style of play has been compared to that of his former manager, Pep Guardiola with the now Manchester City coach certainly having a big impact on how Xavi sees the game. But before we take a look at Barcelona's main style of play, it's important to outline the formation and some key statistics. The majority of their matches have been played in a 4-3-3, with Xavi switching into a very unique 3-2-4-1 in their 4-1 win over Real Sociedad. The starting 11 has been relatively consistent so far, with Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Koundé, Arayo, Garcia and Balde. Busquets sits in front of the back line, with the extremely dynamic box-to-box -box midfielders in Pedri and Gavi. The wingers in Rafinha and Dembele star either side of the new star striker Robert Lewandowski. The team is certainly not sure of quality substitutes either, with Christensen, Marcus Alonso, De Jong, Kessie, Sergio Roberto, Depay and Torres each making appearances so far. Individually, Robert Lewandowski picked up from where he'd left off at Bayern Munich, with 8 goals in his first 6 matches. He's proven to be the missing piece to the puzzle, and is a constant threat in the box. 18-year-old left-back Alejandro Balde has been the breakout star for the club, with three assists to his name already, being excellent at giving width to the attack and delivering balls into the box. And in goal, Ter Stegen is as reliable as ever, with the highest save percentage in the league, conceding only one goal so far. As a whole, Xavi is a manager that insists on his team retaining possession, and adopts the fundamentals of positional play, that he most certainly learned while playing under Guardiola. So far this season, Barca have averaged 65 possession in La Liga, by far the highest in the league. But not only that, they have the highest amount of possession in the opposition's defensive third, and the lowest in their own. Barcelona are completely dominating the stats so far, with the highest expected goals, the lowest expected goals against, the highest pressing intensity, and the most amount of passes to name a few. If you want to see the full extent of their dominance, then check out Sokerman for in-depth statistics. The link is in the description down below. The only stat they're not winning in is pass completion rate, in which they're second to Real Madrid, who are actually first in La Liga. So you might want to pump those numbers up, Barca. So these stats help paint the picture of how Barcelona dominate the ball and want to control the game. But how exactly do they do that? Let's start by taking a look at their in-possession principles. Firstly, Barcelona will almost always build from the back. The centre-backs start wide either side of Ter Stegen, with the full-backs hugging the touchline. Barcelona don't tend to commit too many players to the build-up, and will look to beat the press with the back four, and the holding mid creating a passing lane past the strikers. If the opposition gets too aggressive, then a direct ball into the full-back from Ter Stegen is also used. This ball is dangerous against the front three, as it directly bypasses the attack and if the opposition's midfielder moves out to cover, it frees a player in the centre. With patience, Barcelona rotate the ball between the fullback, centre-back and holding mid, waiting for a gap to play it into one of the two box-to-box -box midfielders, who can lay it off to Busquets in space, or flick it on to one of the wingers. At times, if the opposition are well-drilled and cover the three midfielders, then Lewandowski will also drop off the defensive line to help create a passing lane. Overall, their structure during build-up resembles a 2-3-2-3, meaning they have good cover up the pitch and from side to side. When researching this video, it was actually quite difficult to understand how Barcelona built from the back. Because firstly, they don't concede that many goal kicks. And secondly, most teams in the league don't press them high up the pitch, because they know that's just going to leave gaps further up that Barcelona will exploit. The only team to have caused a lot of issues to their build-up so far was Bayern Munich in the Champions League aggressively closing down Busquets and the two centre-backs, but maintaining enough central cover to stop any key passes in the centre. Nonetheless, if Barcelona do beat the press, the true brilliance of this team can be seen when entering the opposition's half. The main idea in the final third is to stretch the pitch, with the wingers staying as high and as wide as possible, and the two midfielders often moving into the half spaces to create a front five. So far this season, the vast majority of the time, Barcelona hold possession in the opposition's half, 
with the opposition adopting a low defensive block to cover the space in the centre. While they do line up as a back four, their offensive structure is much more resemblant of a 3-4-3. The fullbacks and the wingers hug the touchline, with the holding mid dropping between the centre backs, shifting into a back three allowing the centre-backs to hold a position in the half-spaces and get more width, forcing the opposition's midfield line to slightly loosen up. From here, the two mid Zalet take it in turns to drop and create gaps in behind. For example, let's say Pedri drops deep. This would create space that Dembele could move into, freeing up the flank for Balde who pushes up. Lewandowski positions himself on the centre-back parallel to Dembele, meaning the team has support between the lines. This works exceptionally well because the two box-to-box -box midfielders coordinate their movements. With one dropping deep, the other pushes up, meaning Barcelona always have four players in attack. Here's the trick. If the opposition follows this run into the space between the lines from the winger, the opposition has to make a choice. Either the fullback closes him down and gives space to Balde, or the centre-back drops off and leaves space for Lewandowski. The coordinated runs between the box-to-box -box midfielders is where the majority of the chances are created. Here's another example. The right centre back is on the ball. Kessie attacks the back line along with Lewandowski, forcing the back line to shift backwards to prevent a ball over the top. This space here is attacked by Pedri, shifting into the right inside channel. If he's pressed by the fullback, he can move it into Rafinha. But if he's pressed by the centre back, a through ball creates a quick goal scoring opportunity. This space between the lines is crucial for their system to work. And with four players constantly making dummy runs in behind, it becomes very difficult for the opposition to close this space down, as they need to be constantly aware of the direct ball. The real danger can be seen when the team move the ball into these spaces out wide. Dembele and Rafinha are extremely dangerous in 1v1 situations, which is created thanks to the right back and midfielder dragging the other defenders away. There is a slight variation on the right depending on who is playing. If it's Rafinha, he prefers cutting inside, given being naturally left-footed meaning Koundé will overlap on the flank. However, if it's Dembele, although being excellent with both feet, he prefers to use his right foot, and so the right back will underlap into the half space. Once they beat their man, the box is packed with players, with four players on the defensive line running in. Coordinated runs onto the front post, back post, and for the layoff cause havoc and mean Barcelona can always find a player in the box. This attacking structure embraces the principles of positional play with each player moving to free up space which is then occupied by a teammate. Xavi is happy for his players to roam around the pitch, which is why you often see Pedri forming a back three, or Lewandowski shifting out wide with the winger acting as the striker. So far this season, 14 of their 18 goals have come from open play, so they're certainly doing something right. Now, while they have been a joy to watch on the ball, their defensive shape is certainly worth highlighting, with one of the best defensive records in Europe so far. Barcelona are very well drilled in their defensive shape, adopting an aggressive man-to-man -man pressing approach from goal kicks. Against the back four, one of the two midfielders will push up with Lewandowski, with the wingers covering the fullbacks, and the other two midfielders shadow marking options in the centre. They have very clear pressing triggers and up the tempo if the ball shifts out wide, or if the opposition has their back to goal. But the priority remains covering the centre, and so if a high press isn't instantly available, the structure quickly drops into a number of different shapes, depending on how high up the pitch they are. The first fullback is a 4-1-4-1, with the wingers coming either side of the midfielders, and the holding mid covering the space between the lines. Secondly, when dropping further back, it shifts into a 4-2-3-1, with one of the centre mids moving alongside Busquets to cover the centre. Finally, when in their own defensive third, the structure is more of a 4-4-1-1, with one winger staying further up to give more support to Lewandowski. This structure allows them to always have Lewandowski as an outlet option, who has excellent hold-up play. And the pace of Dembele and Rafinha mean Barcelona are an extremely dangerous team in transitions, who can quickly create counter-attacks and outnumber the opposition's defence. Barcelona have been a joy to watch this season and it finally looks as if they're back to their best, after a few seasons of negativity surrounding the club. Xavi has changed the whole mentality of the club, the players and the fans, and has got them believing that success is just around the corner. So given how Xavi bases a lot of his footballing philosophy on what he learned from Pep Guardiola, why not check out this video on how Guardiola transformed Barcelona into one of the greatest teams in football history. As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more. Thanks for watching.